Crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions. Everyone's been talking about highly anticipated Ethereum merge. Ethereum, we have this merge coming. Can Ethereum flip Bitcoin around the merge state? Three ahem merge test me se dusra wala jo test hai wo pura kia hai. But what is Ethereum merge? When is Ethereum merge and who is Ethereum merge in the first place? The one line summary is this. Ethereum merge represents Ethereum shifting from proof of work to proof of stake consensus mechanism. If you want to know more, stick around. But before we dive into any of this, make sure you subscribe to the Coinsuch Kuber YouTube channel. So let's get started. To understand Ethereum merge, we first need to understand DeFi and how financial systems work. So let's trace the evolution of money. From 5,000 years ago till now, we've had metallic money, paper notes, plastic cards, even digital payments. Point being, these were all centralized, meaning they were controlled by intermediaries. Decentralized finance or DeFi redistributes that power from people to pieces of code. Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin was the first real example of this. That's baby Vitalik Buterin, the guy who created the second largest crypto after Bitcoin, Ethereum. Ethereum isn't just a token, it's a platform for decentralized apps. Just to give you an idea, DeFi platform's market size is expected to touch $500 billion by 2028. Great, so Ethereum is revolutionizing finance as we know it. But wait, hold on, I'm getting a call. Houston, I think we have a problem. Let's say Ethereum's main network is a bike, an old energy guzzler with wobbly tires. It can't move faster even if it tries. What it needs is a new electric engine to make it a lean, clean machine. However, Ethereum's mainnet supports several decentralized apps and projects. So the aim is to keep it running. The old bike that's been plodding along should ideally not be stopped. So the million dollar question is this. How does one change the engine of a moving bike? The solution that the developers came up with was to have two bikes run parallel to each other perfectly in sync and then swap their engines. So I guess Ajay Devgan's entry in Fuller Kante was ahead of its time. Alright, so no pressure. But they are one shot to get this right. All of the test runs were done on a parallel blockchain called the Beacon blockchain, a parallel test network. And so far, they've gotten it right thrice. In fact, the last trial was on 10th August called Go Early. The act of swapping the traditional engine with the new electric one is called the merge. What does any of this mean in real terms? The old traditional engine is called proof of work, while the new electric one is proof of stake. Both of these are different ways of creating a block on the blockchain. There's actually a whole Twitter tug of war on which is better. To understand this better, let's say there's a race. In proof of work, whoever crosses the finish line first wins. The effort of whoever else was competing alongside is more or less wasted energy. If you add up the energy of everyone who is participating in the race, the total is this huge, gigantic number and hence, the process is energy intensive. In proof of work, if you translate it into the crypto world, everyone solves this complex math problem and whoever solves it first gets ETH tokens. Let's talk about proof of stake now. In this case, it's important to note that not everyone runs the race. At the start of the race, everyone pulls in money and the race organizer decides who runs. Whoever puts in the highest amount has the highest chances of being selected because if they don't perform the task, they lose the entire sum. So there's maximum motivation to complete the task. Overall, as you can tell, there's less effort involved. In the crypto world for POS, the protocol acts a bit like a weighted dice while selecting who will solve the next puzzle. Higher the staked amount, higher the chance of getting selected and earning ETH. This is how proof of stake is way more energy efficient than proof of work. In fact, a recent article by Washington Post talked about how Ethereum's energy consumption is 45,000 gigawatts per hour. That's equivalent to New Zealand's entire energy consumption in one year. This is the ultimate Hulk smash fact in support of POS. All the POS experiments that we are talking about are happening on the Beacon blockchain. That's the second bike in our earlier example. Think of the merge as a union between Ethereum's main network and Ethereum's Beacon blockchain. And as with most unions and weddings, there's a lot of excitement but a lot of chaos as well. Twitter's been filled with rumours about the Ethereum merge, so we thought it's time to clear the air, time for some myth busting. The first one, hands down, has to be about how Ethereum will be able to process 1 lakh transactions per second after switching to POS. 
To give you some context, currently Ethereum is only able to process some 30 transactions per second. Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin's quote talks about how this will be true after all of the phases of ETH's roadmap. For now, the switch from POW to POS just entails a 10% increase in speed. The second most common myth is how gas fee will reduce on the Ethereum network. Gas fee is what we use to transact on the network. Let's be clear, the merge is all about the way we decide how to mine crypto. There's not going to be any impact on gas fee. The third rumor that we'll be talking about is about how users will be able to take out or withdraw the ETH tokens they pulled as part of the POS after the merge. Unfortunately, the ETH tokens that you had staked, you won't be able to withdraw. They'll be locked in for the next 6 to 12 months until the next merge upgrade comes around. Now let's talk about the big day, the run-up to which made us all feel like Mr. Bean, wondering whether it's even happening, if at all. So the dates of the merge is set. It's set to happen between the 10th and the 20th of September 2022. Well, let's say the merge is a huge success. What next? Some say that the crypto mining process will become 99.95% more eco-friendly after the merge. More environmental benefits means higher adoption from, say, governments and institutions, and hence more demand. At the same time, and this is linked to the third myth we busted just now, the ETH tokens that people pooled or staked can't be withdrawn, at least for the next 6-12 to 12 months till the network's upgraded. That means there won't be a sudden sell-off of Ethereum tokens, that is, a lot of people adding Ethereum tokens into circulation. Hence, supply is more or less constant. I know what you're thinking, potential bull run, right? But there's so many variables at play, price movement is bound to happen because of the volatility. For more insights on the price action, check out our latest episode of our new podcast, Crypto Kranti. Let's keep in mind though that the story doesn't end at the merge. It's just the first part. Vitalik Buterin listed five stages of his vision for Ethereum's development. We still have surge, verge, purge and splurge. All of these are steps to make Ethereum's network more efficient. That was a long and short of one of the biggest events in blockchain history. By adopting proof of stake, Ethereum will help green the crypto world. Low transaction speed and high gas fee remain to be hurdles, but a successful ETH merge will bring us one step closer to Web3 and DeFi implementation. Drop a comment about what you'd like to know next about the world of Web3. If you like this video, don't forget to like and share. See you next time.